Hope you're having a good Friday, my friends. Well, our next guest is a comedy legend in her own right, having uh, co-founded The Daily Show with our other good buddy, Madeline Smithberg. And she's joining us to talk about the late great, which is still very odd to say, uh, really, the late great uh, Louis Anderson. Please welcome back to the show our buddy, Liz Winstead. Hi, Liz. Hi. I wish you were here, sweetie, on, with, under better, better circumstances. I, it, it is weird. I, I know it's a cliche, but... Even reading that in the teleprompter, Liz, that was odd to say. It's really hard to even process it now. And, you know, it's, it's hard when somebody has been so influential and close to you to talk about these things. And, but so often I feel like when legends um, die in the media, if you don't hear from the people that knew them, it just becomes a lot of <clears throat> noise. And I wanted... And I think a lot of people feel this way, you know, journalist Marty Keller from the Twin Cities and Jeff Cesario had an incredible piece in, yeah. in the Trib yesterday. Um, to honor Louis in a way that he needed to be is really important for me. And, you know, he was, when I started doing comedy, he was somebody who was just forming the comedy scene, really, with the comedy all-stars at Dudley Riggs. And... The first time that I ever headlined in the Twin Cities, I was still just living in Minneapolis and it was my first big time to, to do five nights at the Comedy Gallery. And Louis flew in from Los Angeles to open, to be my opening act so that people would come and see my show. Like that's the guy he was. Like I, I was a nobody. I was going to say, that was, you know, I, I was going to reach out anyway, and I always feel bad. I mean, I, I never like to take advantage of friendships, but I'm glad that you started with what you said, because that's exactly why I sent you a message, because, and I'm glad we did it a week later, because I didn't, my, my, my feeling was, I didn't want Louie to be a headline for a day, Liz. You know what I mean? Right. Especially in Minnesota, I didn't want that to happen. I, I didn't want it to be, oh, it's in the evening news, and then we move on to the next, you know, thing that we're upset about. So I'm, yeah. I, I really, really appreciate you being here. And w the catalyst for me sending the message immediately was that tweet that you uh, about that story uh, flying from L.A. But that's who he was, right, Liz? That's that's a yeah. uh, that's who Louis was. And I have to tell you, like, there's a million stories that comics will tell about how he. If he just saw you and he liked you, he wanted people to know you. You know, he was also such a champion of weirdos, you know, of people who are not necessarily in the mainstream, who he saw talent of that he really wanted to amplify. And, you know, the other thing about Louis that is massively great um, is I grew up in the Twin Cities, born and raised. I'm the youngest of five kids in my family. Like, you think I ever got a word in edgewise? You think anybody <laughs> ever was like, why do you think you're the funny one? You know, but every time I would do a show or we would like, I would, Louis Anderson would be doing a show and I would bring my family to the show. Louis would go out of his way to make sure that my siblings and my parents all heard how funny he thought I was, you know, that he was like, she is a star, you know? And it was just mm. like, as the youngest kid in a family, it's like, thank you. They would beat me up constantly. <laughs> and now I have like all of my vindication. <laughs> Well, and I, I love this, too, because I think he's he's getting the credit that he deserves because and Liz, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think because he wasn't the flashiest of comedians and he wasn't the loudest in the room and he, you know, and he wasn't a, a creating scandals here and there. And no offense to the greats that do that. But I don't often think that Louis gets the credit that he deserves for being just an iconic comedian, a smart, brilliant comic, don't you think? Also, unique in his storytelling yes. capacities. I always say to people, like, what do you like in it? When people say, like, what do you like in a comedian? Um, and one of the things that I just revel in and the comics I love, like Maria Bamford, also happens to be from Minnesota, and Louis, is the capacity to, A, tell a story, take you on a journey, and feel comfortable in the silent moments that really make the comedy great. Mm. As we remember Louis uh, talking about his mom or his dad, you know, and he'd be like, wow. <laughs> you know, and he'd take that moment that e most comics don't have the confidence enough to sit in comfortably. Louis was that. He sustained in storytelling, very unique in the way he told stories too, because 
I always like to do a reset too. Minnesota is not the Midwest. It's Minnesota. Yeah. We are unique in so much of who we are, how we are, how we embrace where we're from. It's totally different than Wisconsin or Iowa or the Dakotas or anything. And Louis captured who Minnesotans were in their core and all of our weirdo flaws, our weird passive aggressive stuff, which is so intense. <laughs> like no one was better than Louis at putting, laying all that bare and having all of us laugh about it. And don't you think too, I, you and I are very connected today. You're, we're, we're on track even miles away from each other. I was just gonna no, say- No, I'm in Minnesota, honey. I'm at my home in Minnesota. Oh, fabulous. Um, but I was gonna say, Liz, he was such a good, I heard so many people last Friday say, oh, he was uh, such a great representative of Minnesota. And I thought to myself, he was a great representative of Minnesota, Liz, because he didn't rely on lazy tropes and stereotypes that, that the entertainment industry often uh, pulls out of their toolbox to do Minnesota, right? Yeah. He was, very, he went deep, you know, he went, he did the deep cuts. You know, he was like <laughs> album rock. <laughs> you know, he would go, and that's what I love so much about him is that, and he didn't sacrifice those deep cuts because it might not have played to a wider audience. He understood that if you can um, unpack uh, a culture, uh, everybody will laugh at it if you do it with great detail mm -hmm. because there's always overlaps and intersections between cultures, right? And so Louis really did that. And even when he was like, you know, like I've read some pieces like, oh, and then he got fired from some sh like hosting Family Feud or whatever. He never stopped being one of the most amazing comedians ever. And maybe he did gigs. We've all done gigs where you host a talk, you host a game show or whatever to make money. So what? He didn't compromise his work, his life. Anytime I ever asked him to do a charity function for something I was involved in, always said yes, always said yes to everybody. And yep. was always um, somebody who just opened up his home and his heart to you always. And also said, I love you every time he said goodbye to you, yep. to everybody and was hugging. Like he was very much a person who wanted you to feel um, that he, he, give you, he would give you a lasting moment that you could hang on to. Absolutely. Liz, again, I said at the beginning, I said, I really appreciate this. I didn't mean to bug you, but this meant a lot to me, and I, I really wanted the audience to hear from you. So thank you for doing this. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, Jason. Talk to you soon. You can follow Bye -bye. Liz on Twitter to search for Liz Winstead. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Love you, Liz.